Hey, what's up everybody? Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Today in this video, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna go ahead and do a Q&A here and draw a Ninja Turtle as we do this Q&A. This is something new. We've never done this before. Uh, I'm not professionally trained, I guess, to draw or anything like that. I just like to sketch around every now and then. So I thought sketching a turtle, answering some of your questions would be pretty cool. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the questions you guys asked. All right, this first one, there was a bunch of different questions that were similar to this one as well. And it is, when and how did you become a fan of the TMNT? And that's a good question. Uh, I think it was, had to be around 1990. It was when the first movie came out and just everybody was getting in to the Turtles at the time. And, um, I just remember that we had older cousins and stuff that were all excited about it. I was very young at the time. I had to be about three years old at the time. And um, we went to go see a movie and it was the in a drive-in theater. So park outside in your car and you, you see the movie. And I just remember that it was something that really resonated with me. I just remember, I loved the way that the turtles felt so real. They felt real, like you could reach out and like touch them, like the textures of the suits and the rubber suits and stuff. And yeah, they just felt like real, real creatures, but they still had like, and obviously I didn't notice as a kid, but now looking back at it, uh, they had the the market the, that still marketable look that Ninja Turtles that big that famous look that they have, but they were real, and I think that's why that first movie is just holds up so well. It's just because it it looks so real and it's got that marketable Ninja Turtles look, and that's just something we haven't seen in live action really uh, since then. And yeah, I just remember that movie we saw it this twice in the same night and then at the drive-in and then when we got the vhs uh later later on in the year that was really cool because uh we, we could just watch it over and over i remember we had uh an aunt, i used to go visit a cousin of mine and they had a van and this was like the first time that they did like the TVs that hung down from like the ceiling, like the ceiling of like the van. And so you could watch like VHS tapes as you were driving around. So like whenever our, my aunt would drive us around, like during like the summer or whatever, or vacation, we would, yeah, we would uh, watch that movie like on repeat. And then obviously the second movie came out and that was super cool too. And yeah, that's pretty much what started like my obsession with Turtle Mania, sort of. Like at least my first like wave. It's like coming waves. So it was like that. That was like the first one. And then um Hold up, just trying to get the mouth here. Okay, you gotta kinda lean over. Um, yeah. That kind of got me into it. Uh, then the cartoon came out and the cartoon, did I make the head too big? Hold up. Looks a little too tall the head. Maybe I'll make it a little shorter. I don't like how tall that is. And, uh, yeah, then that got me into turtle mania pretty much. And then the cartoon came out. Or the cartoon was already out, but then I was exposed to the cartoon. I don't remember how that happened. It must have either been one of my siblings or one of my cousins introduced me to it. And that was it. I've started, parents would get me the toys and stuff every now and then. And yeah. Let's take a look at the, the next question here. 
All right, this one's coming over here from Jeremy Bowen. And they're asking, how would you rank the TMNT movies? That's a good one. I like that one. Um, obviously, 1990. To me, that's that's the GOAT. Uh, then after that... Whew, I would say... After night, I think Secret of the Use is still up there. It's not as good as that first one, but it's just uh, still a solid movie, super fun, and I really like uh, the turtle suits. As I mentioned, they still look good in that one. Not quite as good as the first movie, but still pretty good. Uh, then after Secret of the Ooze. Get the chest started here. I like to get the chest plate started here so I can. It's kind of like a Bob Ross video. Where's pain? Um, yeah, I like to do start off the chest plate just to give me like some type of uh, reference, I guess. I don't know. Just kind of help me see where I am because I'm kind of like going into nowhere now. And I'm like, I need something to kind of guide me. Um, yeah, so 1990, Secret of the Ooze. Oh, geez. I would say probably Mutant Mayhem's probably right there. Mutant Mayhem, yeah. I would put 2007 like right next to Mutant Mayhem. Like they're side by side, but something's missing with on like the villain aspect of 2007 for me. And I think uh, I think Mutant Mayhem had a better villain. I think Ice Cube does a pretty good job as Superfly. So yeah, I think it just kind of edges it out for me. As for like the animation style, the designs of the turtles, I like them pretty equally. Uh, I think it's roughly around the same. And I think that's, uh, yeah, that's why I give me and mayhem just a little bit of an edge over 2007. Uh, so yeah, so after me and mayhem 2007. So right now we have 1990, uh, secret of the ooze. Let me get this, the chest piece here, right? 1990 secret of the ooze. Mutant Mayhem, 2007. Oh, wait, I forgot about Batman vs. Ninja Turtles. Hold up. We got to go back. Because that one's really good. Batman vs. Ninja Turtles actually... Might be, like, right under Secret of the Ooze for me. So it's 1990, Secret of the Ooze, Batman vs. Ninja Turtles... Mutant Mayhem, 2007. Then what else do we got? Then you got the Bay movies. So I, I think the people like the second one. I like the first one a little better. So I'll say 2014, Michael Bay Turtles. And then Out of the Shadows this is my least favorite. I know a lot of people like that one. They, Cause it's like, oh, they brought a lot of stuff from the cartoon and stuff. I don't know. I just think the stuff they did bring from the cartoon. I don't. I didn't like the way they did it. Just my opinion, I guess. But yeah, that's my rankings on the movies. Uh, yeah, let me know your guys is down below in the comments. Let's move on over to the next question. All right, the next one's from Kuzan, the Hellbent, and they ask, "Would you want to see a Ninja Turtles anime?" You know, that'd be pretty interesting, a Ninja, a Ninja Turtles anime. Yes, I, to answer your question, yes, I would like to see a Ninja Turtles anime. Um, one, I, one, because I feel like if they did, if they went down the anime route, they could do a little, you know, stuff that's a little darker. At least I would imagine uh, going anime. They could do some darker stuff, which would be cool. Uh, I feel like the Turtles, you know, they always had... Obviously, 
the toys and be, you know, having the child friendly side of things, you know, but like all brands do, like all big successful brands do. They, you know, even like stuff like DC and Marvel and, and stuff like that, you know, they have like their little kid friendly stuff that they do. I don't know, like on Disney or whatever, Disney XD or whatever. Like they'll have like the little Spider-Man characters like for like the little kids but then also they have like the spider-man movies and those go pretty dark sometimes and uh i think that's that's the turtles are in that same ballpark where they could have stuff that's super family family friendly and um obviously you know to sell toys and stuff like that and like yeah that's cool but then, you know, they also have a lot of cool dark stories that, you know, it's cool seeing them in the comics and stuff like, but I, I'm sure fans would absolutely love to see some of those darker stories told on screen. Uh, and, you know, I think that's just would be perfect for like a, an anime. Uh, actually, there was the designs. Uh, for that, it was like a 2016 short. And hold up, trying to get them. Make sure I'm not getting out of whack here with like my line. I'm trying to like line up, make sure I'm not getting crooked here. That looks pretty good. Let me sharpen my pencil real quick. Um, yeah, there was these designs that came out oh i just dropped all my pencils uh there was the design that came out for the 2016 uh, nickelodeon shorts there was these shorts that they did and those look amazing and the way they move and stuff when they're fighting that's exactly how i'd want to see a ninja turtles anime just like that and then do like a bunch of cool dark stories maybe you could do like last ronin as an anime it'd be pretty sweet all right so drawing the turtle here uh, we'll get to another question right now. I just kind of want to explain a little bit what I'm trying to do. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see. The light's kind of like glaring like the pencil. So you might not see it on camera, but here, like the angle I'm at, like super hard to tell kind of what I'm doing. So I'm kind of like flying blind a little bit up here. Um, so right now I'm going to go ahead and add like, you know, little veins and stuff just to make them look like he's got his blood pumping i like doing that just get the blood pumping a little bit just makes him look a little more i don't know like he's active i guess just uh yeah he's got a lot of cool like 80s toys and stuff he even look like the old ninja turtles 80s toys they always had like cool like little veins and stuff little details like that that look cool so yeah, like this is like the neck connecting to the shoulder here. You got the shoulders. He's got ripped shoulders for sure. Want to make sure I give him some muscle, like super defined muscle. Don't want to make him too hulking. Uh, let's keep going here. Like so, like these right here. These are like the little ridges of the shell. And then up here, you have like how the shell would be. So I'd imagine it'd be like something like that, like a little like a curve like that. So we're going to go ahead and draw just like the little ridges. Just like that. And then just kind of connect them like that. Boom, 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 boom. And then I like when they do the, like the lines here from like on the side of the shell they do like these little lines sometimes depending on which version of the turtles oh let me get some i guess depth to like the chest plates let me erase some of that so i like, give it kind of like a small little 3d effect there on the side there you go i know it's not like super professional but you know just gives it kind of a little extra like beveled look i guess 
on the side of the chest plate right there. And then the lines. Let's do the lines now. That would be here on the side. I like the way that looks. Just gives them a little bit of a more texture, I guess, to the design. That looks super cool. All right, let's get on to the next question. All right, this one's coming over here from Joe Secret Garden. And they ask, what's your favorite Ninja Turtle movie song? Turtle Power or Ninja Rap? Ooh, that's a hard one. Um, I think I'll... I think I'm going to go with... Oh, this one's hard. I think I'm going to go with Turtle Power, though. Just because... They're both good. I like both of them. I like nine, a 90s rap. Super catchy, super cool. And But I just think Turtle Power, it's more in like the instruments. When those like, I don't know what they are. They're like horns or like synth or whatever that, that hits right when the song is starting. When that, like those notes hit, especially like when like the movie's over, it just feels so cool. Like, I don't know. It just... I guess too, it's also very connected to that original movie, which is my favorite. And I think that's probably another major reason why I like it. But yeah, no, no, both are great. Both are great songs, but definitely more of a, a Turtle Power fan. But yeah, let's keep moving here. We're going to go ahead and do the next shoulder. So let me make sure this doesn't come out wrong. He's kind of coming in crooked too. Uh, I, I think it's just the way everything's all laid out here, but it's okay. We're gonna give him same shoulder. I'm trying to make sure same size as the other one. Like I said, not professionally trained or anything. I'm just kind of winging it here, but I do like sketching. Like I said, the turtles here. I might do Shredder one day. Let me know if you guys like this style of video. We'll go ahead. Maybe we'll do Shredder one day. Um, so yeah, that shoulder. And then we're gonna go ahead and start the bicep here. Make sure it's the same, close to the same size as the other one. And let's see. That's the side of the bicep. Again, give him some veins on it. And yeah. All right, let's move on to the next question here. All right, this next one's coming from KZ and it says, what's the next TMNT movie? Well, that's a good question, especially if like, you know, you don't, if you haven't been like following along with like the news and stuff, when it comes to like the turtle stuff, like, yeah, you might not know like, oh yes, Mutant Mayhem is gonna get uh, a sequel. So they're continuing uh, with part two it sounds like, and some of the details that's been coming out, uh, it's pretty interesting. And so it does look like we're going to be getting the shred the shredder. Uh, so that is something we're going to be getting. I think there was like a recent interview where they were saying, you know, they want like the shredder to be like 10 times scarier than Superfly. Like, so he's probably going to be like more devastating. So if you saw Mutant Mayhem, you saw that Superfly like can beat the crap out of bebop and rocksteady at the same time like so that you know as for fighting skills that's pretty scary but if they want to make shredder even scarier he's probably going to be doing some pretty messed up stuff which i can't wait for it's going to be pretty cool uh let's uh, keep going here on the side of this turtle when it's uh so yeah mutant mayhem is getting a sequel and when is it coming out uh, I think it was the follow-up to this question. Yeah, and when is it? So, from what we've been uh, just seeing like in the news and stuff, they're gonna be doing a television show uh, that takes place after Mutant Mayhem with these Mutant Mayhem turtles. So that's what's like, before the next movie. So that's probably like in the spring of this upcoming year. And that's gonna be a 2D animated show. 
So you know how the first one was, let me draw the guideline here, or at least like a little light line, just so I could see the shape of the back of his shell there and just kind of keep that pattern going with like the little ridges there. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, this show, sharpen my pencil here, is coming out uh, probably in the springtime of next year. It's gonna be 2D animated. It takes place after the events of Mutant Mayhem. And th this part I'm not too 100% about, but you would imagine since the way the movie ended that they're gonna be going to school in the series. So at least that's what I would guess from the ending of the movie. So that's something new we have never seen before. That's wild to me. That's, I don't know if it's good or bad yet. We'll see. Well, like, obviously we'll have to see what that looks like, but that's just, I just, I'm curious to see how they pull that off is probably the best way to put it. Uh, so yeah. And then after that will be the movie. And I don't think that would be next year. And if it is, it would be late next year if anything, but I doubt it. I think that's going to be 2025 when the, the sequel to Mutant Mayhem comes out. Let me do these lines here. You can see the lines there. So we kind of got that whole pattern in the shell going on like that. And there you go. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the next question here. All right. The next one here is, do you prefer the Ninja Turtles to be all red bandanas or colored ones? I think, I think the way the IDW turtles handled it, for those who don't know, the IDW uh, turtles is the IDW comics version of the TMNT. So those are the newer comics, the ones that are coming out uh, nowadays. And the way they did it was pretty legit. Like they had Raphael missing at the beginning of their story. So Raphael's missing. And so I think like Splinter or something, I forgot. I have, it's been a while. Has them all wear you know, like red bandanas and like memory of him or in the hopes that he's still out there or something like that. Uh, and then they eventually, you know, they find Raphael and the family's all together. Uh, and they they all get their they all then are get their individual colors uh the splinter gives it to them and so it's kind of a cool way of like like honoring the original mirage ninja turtles and uh so honoring that by giving them the red bandanas as they're starting out but then obviously giving them their individual colors just so you know, because it's cool. Like it's when you're growing up, you know, you're everybody. Well, which one are you? Are you the blue one? You're the red one? Are you the orange one? You're the purple one? It's kind of cool. Everybody like when you're when you're younger, you know, everybody's got their own turtle. Even now, when you're older, everybody's got their own turtle. Yeah. So, OK, so where are we here in the design? I'm trying to figure out what to do with his hands. Uh, let's finish the torso area. So we'll go ahead and add the last couple panels here. So like that, we'll go ahead and like that. So we'll do like the six panels, one, two, three, four, five, six, which is pretty much what most people do when they draw turtles. Although I've seen, I've seen different styles. Yeah. Like the Batman versus Ninja Turtles uh, movie turtles. They have like eight panels. And then, yeah, that looked interesting. It made him look really long. So there you go. There's that. That's kind of like, should have made that one a little wider. It's not as wide as this side. It's not perfect, but I could definitely, like, it was just more noticeable. Uh, there you go. There we are. It's kind of like that part of the torso area. Let's do a little bit of the outside here. 
Uh, but which one do I like more? Uh, if I had to choose between the all red and the color, I like the color just for that reason. Like everybody, everybody gets their own color. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Okay, what are we gonna do here with his hands? Uh, is he just gonna be like clenching his fist? Uh, that's probably like the easiest thing to do. Just have him clenching his fist. Well, if that is the case, I think I need to like, or maybe this one can be clenched and this one can be open. Okay, yeah, we could do something like that. Let's clench his fist here. Let me try my best. There you go. I think that's pretty good. Where's that wrong? I think I'm doing a hand wrong. Hold up. Yeah, something's wrong with the hand. Yeah, there we go. We'll do it like that. Do one knuckle there. We only got two of them. Got three or three of them if you count the thumb here. Yeah, he's just he's ready to punch somebody. Which is Raph style. Yeah, there we go. There's his wristband. And there here's his forearm. There we go. We'll do some veins here in the hand too, just showing some showing some more just kind of he's amped up he's ready to go yeah i like that okay uh let's move on to the next question here oh this next one's really interesting okay favorite franchises besides tmnt that is actually really interesting uh i would say after TMNT, uh, there's a couple for sure. Uh, I would WWE count. I, that's something that that I was a huge fan of uh, back in the day, the Attitude Era. And recently, I've come back to and. I like what I'm seeing. I like what they're, they're doing right now. I really like, uh, I like what they're doing with Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes. Now CM Punk's back. So I like what they're doing there. Uh, I don't know if it's just my imagination, but for a while there, I, I just wasn't really feeling it. And then after this past WrestleMania, I think it was with Cody and, uh, Roman that they got my attention again. I was like, wait, has something changed? Is something, uh, it kind of feels like they're going back to what made me like it so much back in the day. Obviously not as, it's not as like, like brutal back then. It was crazy. Uh, uh, now it's obviously a little more toned down. It's not as, it's not as wild. But something, but something about like the way they're doing the characters kind of reminds me of back then for some reason. I don't know if it's like the costumes they're using or something. Like they almost like they got more organized with like how the characters look or how they're written or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But something to me has gotten better. So that's one franchise that I like if you consider it like WWE. Uh, then after WWE. I like I like the Lord of the Rings franchise. Uh, I I'm only if I like the Hobbit movies, but it's the, the the first three are what I really like. I don't the Hobbit movies are to me they look different, like visually. I I don't like how almost almost like everything has a glow to it. I guess where those first ones they just they look like like films. They look great. Or like old school films, I guess. I don't know. Just less. They seem less computer graphic. Like there's less of it in there. Like they did a better job blending practical with 
CG and it just to me it just looks better because of that I think when they rely too much on CG it just things have like this weird glow to them or something I don't know I don't know what I'm talking about but that's the best way to kind of articulate that I guess but yeah like the original trilogy and the extended cuts like I like those uh, then after that another franchise that I'm into uh, and this is more newer that I, I got into as I got older but uh, the uh, Star Trek the, the original series and then the next generation uh, especially the next generation it's like super good it's something that I'm like where was this my whole life I'd never seen it before I heard about it like it was always like on TV like the commercials and stuff back in the day but and still like it's, I think it's like on syndication on on channel some channels so yeah I always knew about it but I never watched it until recently and I've I've fallen in love I like I like the next generation all right let's see where we're at here with the drawing so I drew them kind of crooked just because the way I'm sitting here as I'm drawing. So I'm trying to figure out, I'll probably just draw them like if he's standing up. We'll just kind of like pretend the paper is like this. Uh, so I'll just, let me get his other hand in here. So that's the other forearm there. I wanna make sure I get his hand right. I'm debating having it open or closed. I think he would have it probably closed like the other one, right? So he's going to have it closed. Yeah, let's do that. Then he's just kind of, he's waiting to like throw down with somebody. Oh, there's a super bad glare right there. I can't see it from where I'm sitting. I'm trying to lean over. So my audio is kind of changing. My bad. Um, so yeah, what was that? WWE, Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, with the older stuff like Next Generation and um, the original series. I haven't really got into like the newer stuff. It, to me, it just, it, oh, I saw Picard. That was good. I like season one and season three. Season two, I didn't like as much. But season one and season three were pretty cool. And it was just cool seeing like the continuation of like the next generation cast of Star Trek. Like what they were up to and stuff like that. I think that's one of the major reasons why I liked it. Doing the back of the shell here. So now like the shell's kind of complete. Yeah, the shape's kind of like. Yeah, it's kind of like the shape of him, but just a little bigger. Like it's elongated like his back. And then maybe I'll do like a little outline just showing like the actual like shell itself kind of like peeking over the edge before it like wraps around his back just to give it just to give him more of like a wider look maybe like the hexagon pattern from the back you can kind of like see like a little bit of it there so yeah there it's a that's a shell I'm not a huge fan of how I'm doing the hands. Uh, maybe I could. No, I think that's it. He's got to have his fist like that. I can't really change it now. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And anything else right now that I'm watching? Trying to think. No, yeah, I can't really think of any right now. That's those are like the first ones that like pop into my head. So yeah, uh, let's move on over to the next question. All right, this one's coming over here uh, from Moon Rack. It says, if you could see the Ninja Turtles crossover with any other franchise, what would it be? Um, My, my dream, uh, it's happened already like on the old show, but not the way how I like want to see it like it happened in the old the next mutation show where they cross over with the power rangers and they, they've done it in the comics actually uh the comics is obviously done a lot better the power rangers uh 
Ninja Turtles comics. But I would like to see that crossover on screen. And I my dream would have, was always, especially back in the day when I was younger, uh, was to see like the 1990 Turtles, like the live action Turtles, and the mighty Morphin Power Rangers, like the 90s ones with the diamonds on their chest. Those designs. And then the 90s Turtles in their suits. Uh, that would have been a cool crossover to see is those specific versions of those uh, characters uh, crossover. The closest we ever got, I believe, was like that commercial that where the Power Rangers did. They did a, um, a commercial for like Secret of the Ooze because it was going to be like on Fox or something. And so the Power Rangers like introduce it or something like that. We're the Power Rangers, and we're here to watch those heroes in a half shell save the world from toxic waste. So get ready for the world broadcast premiere of one more audacious movie. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2: The Secret of the Ooze. We'll be right back in a bit. You can. Hey, let me trim down his arm here. It looks kind of funky. The shape looks kind of weird. Go. Same thing with this one. It looks kind of puffy. I'm gonna go ahead. Just give it a little bit of a better shape here. But yeah, if they could do something like that, like today, like, but use like those original Power Ranger designs, but like kind of how that fan film they did recently or a while back now, where it's those same suits, but they're like modified to look movie quality, I guess. I don't know. That's, they just, they just, I like those original diamond designs. They, they just work so well. All right, let me move all this eraser stuff. Okay, what do we got? So we have Raph here looking good. He's kind of leaning. Let me see. He's kind of leaning to the side. And that was just because I started off sitting kind of funny here. Just trying to figure out how I'm going to finish it. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll do what I was saying. It's just kind of pretend he's on level ground here. Let's go ahead and do this knee pad here. Yeah, but if they can't do it, like... My second option would be the, that same crossover, Ninja Turtles Power Rangers. And those same, like, original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, but animated. I think that could totally work. And honestly, I'm surprised there hasn't been more animated Power Ranger stuff throughout the years. That's to me that's wild. Like that's such a big franchise for like the youth. And they've never done them in animation, I don't think, unless there's like some unless I missed out on something. But I don't think I've ever seen the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers animated. I think that would just be so cool. I so many I feel like if they did it right, a lot of people would watch that. And uh yeah, that would be it would be cool to see that, them animated with the Ninja Turtles. Maybe even do like the comic story. They've already had like two mini series in the comics together. Just do those stories. I think that'd be cool. Uh yeah, let's move on over to the next question. All right, this one's coming over here from Sick Man. It says were you disappointed that Bebop and Rocksteady ended up being good guys in Mutant Mayhem? Because I was. I wanted them to bring chaos as they usually do. Yeah, I, I thought that was interesting. Like, those are like two big Ninja Turtles villains. But now they're like part of the family. I wonder how they're going to tackle, if they're ever going to tackle them being villains again like now they're friends what could possibly persuade them to turn on each other now like that's going to be interesting to see the shredder but what will the shredder shredder do is he like going to hang something over them because that's that's an interesting dynamic i don't think we've ever seen with with bebop and rocksteady so yeah i thought that was an interesting choice as well. Now, I don't know if I was disappointed. I'm not disappointed yet. I want to see what they do. Like, there's still a lot they can do. We, they've just gotten started. 
So I, I'm taking that the wait and see approach and just kind of see where it's all at at the end of the day. But yeah, I did think it was interesting and I thought it was so, like so soon they're friends, like right from the get go. That's going to be interesting to see how they, how they play that off. Uh, let's, let's move on over to the next question. All right. This one's coming over here from Wills. It says if there's, if there were a fifth Ninja Turtle, what would you name it and what weapon? So if, if I could personally do a fifth Ninja Turtle, I'd want to see the whole, like the Kirby, the Kirby storyline that they were. So for those who don't know, back in the day, back in the nineties, when, uh, the Ninja Turtles, uh, three movie came out after Ninja Turtles three, they were planning a fourth movie. And that fourth movie, at least one of the plans, because there was like a bunch of different ones from what I remember. There's like, they had a bunch of different ideas, but one of the ideas was going to be that a fifth Ninja Turtle would appear. Uh, and I believe it's the, the movie idea that they had were with, with some type of interdimensional like doorway. And I think the new turtle would have appeared. His name would have been Kirby. And I think he would have been a bad guy from what I remember uh, talking about when I was covering that. And uh, yeah, I, I want to see that materialize. It just seems like I know there's been Slash and all that. And so like, why would you need another evil turtle? I just think there's like a cool lore behind it. And I just think it would be cool to see it play out. Like, oh, they finally did the Kirby thing. Like, it would just have such a cool story, like, leading up to it. Like, oh, did you know, like, back then they were going to do this Kirby character and it never happened? And now it's happening. Uh, I think it would just give it, like, a cool buzz like that, I think. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah, and I think his weapons... I think his weapons were... They're like these two knives, like big, like hunter knives or I don't know what they are. And then they have like brass knuckles on the handles with like spikes coming off of them. If I'm remembering correctly, I believe that's, that's the weapons that Kirby carries. So yeah, I would like, I would like to see them do Kirby. Uh, finally, that would, that'd be super cool. Uh, in the comics, they have like six turtles or seven turtles already. They have, they have Jenica, which is the yellow turtle. Uh, so that was the human, she was a human and she got turned into a turtle uh, at some point. I think after Karai tried to kill her or something like that. Uh, then they, they introduced Venus not that long ago. And, uh, this version of Venus is done way better than the, uh, the next mutations version of Venus. Uh, yeah. This version's done a lot better. I think I like in the comics Venus more than I like Jenica. I think they're, they're handling Venus better. They're not handling Jenica. They're just, I feel like they're not doing anything. Uh, well, at least where I'm at, I just. I barely finished the army getting game and am reviewing it on in the on the back end. But just from what I've seen, it seems I don't know. I'm just more interested in, in Venus. And that maybe it's like a personal preference, I guess. And maybe because she's also has past lore, so it's like, oh, that's interesting. Uh this kid there's a character that they've done and look at how they're doing her now. I think that's probably probably has a little bit to do with why I, I think I gravitate more towards Venus. I think I like the name too. It just fits a little better with the rest of the turtles. Um, so then, the, then, so there's them too. So, and in this version, I believe Venus is 
what has a white headband or like white markings around her eye or something like that. But I believe she started off baby blue, how she, how she originally was. But I think they're like transitioning her to like a white bandana. Um. Yeah. So there's them two, and then there's Lita. Lita is like the pink turtle, and she's a baby. Oh, she's not a baby. She's like a toddler or a kid. She's a kid. But they got like a future trunk situation going on where like her future self visits and comes uh, to like hang out with the kid version of herself. So it's kind of very similar to like trunks and future trunks. How uh, you see that happen in Dragon Ball. Oh, Dragon Ball is another franchise, by the way. When you were asking, when they were asking about franchises earlier in the video, that's another one that I follow. It's just the the anime. I, I don't read like the mangas or anything, but I, I like I like the I like the show and the movies. Okay, where are we at with this turtle here? Okay, so we kind of just have like a rough like sort of outline here going. I'm gonna finish off the feet here. I'm just gonna have it like looking at the feet from the front so we'll do like one big toe like that what so we'll just kind of do it like that like his toenails kind of like showing a little bit and then we'll have the other toe like so so there you go you're kind of looking at it from like the front right so like he's got his toes facing towards us so we just kind of got that front perspective, I guess. Uh, there we go. And there's the other toenail, I think. And then we'll just kind of do a little bit of like lines there just to show like his, I guess it's like his bones on his feet, like popping out. And maybe like some veins and stuff. Maybe do like a vein in the leg here. Yeah, looks pretty cool. Do a vein on this leg. Looks like it's got like Ronaldo legs. Boom. So we got a nice little outline here. I'm going to erase some stuff here. Just kind of fix the shapes a little bit. That one looked kind of, I don't know. I didn't like the way it was looking there. Looks a little better. Yeah, that's kind of like just the basic outline. Now, I'm not like, like I, like I was mentioning earlier, they have no schooling and drawing or anything. So I just kind of do it the way I've always done it. So I'm going to go ahead and start shading him. Just kind of giving him some depth and stuff. And... I think that'll it'll make him look pretty cool by the end of it. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, yeah start that. But let's go ahead and read another question before we do. All right, this one's coming over here from Slim Bro. Do you think we'll ever get a true sequel that's set after Ninja Turtles three, even having the original April O'Neil return? That would be cool. If they did that, I think, let me sharpen my pencil here real fast. Uh, I think that would be the best way to do it, honestly, because obviously everyone, all the actors and stuff have aged. Uh, I think so. And it's what it's been 30 years since the, that movie or just the route or around there. So the last Ronin story is set 30 years in the future. I think it would be cool to have, and I've seen like the artists from uh, the book, Ben Bishop, he talks about this all the time, about having like that original April come back and then doing the live and do, and them doing a live action uh, last Ronin, but like in that nineties trilogy universe, I think that would be super cool. Everyone's aged where they're supposed to be. Like it's perfect. And both, I guess, stories or 
how do you say it? Like both outings. So like the last Ronin outing was a success, a massive success, at least from my point of view. And the 90s movie was a massive secret of the use and even part three to a certain degree. Those were massive successes. And so now you have these two big successes that could share this story and it would work. It would, I don't see how it wouldn't work. Yeah, I, I think it would work. It's, I think just combining, combining that would be, yeah, it, it would just be good. All right, let's start uh, shading him a little more here. So we're going to go ahead and just give him some like shadow here underneath the plate, just because I would imagine you, you know, you'd have some shadow there the way the light hits. And so just kind of do it like that. And just same thing on the other side. So we're going to go ahead, shade a little bit of the inner leg there. And then underneath the plate here, I'm just kind of just freehand in it. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be super cool. Or yeah, just a, a simple continuation. Back to the question, by the way. Uh, yeah, back. Uh, I think a simple continuation would work too. I think they could do where... Although the here you would have to recast though, like April, just try to get somebody that looks similar and Casey Jones. Cause for this, this next idea, so would it would be having them continue. So you would do as if part one and part two existed. So secret of the use and 1990 existed and then loosely, obviously three is connected to those. So just kind of, you don't have to touch too much on three, but just kind of loose. Maybe they make a joke about it in the movie. Like remember that time we time traveled and everybody goes, no, like, what are you talking about? Almost like us being like, we want to forget that. Like, let's not, let's not talk about that, but it's kind of, you know, do it very tongue in cheek in the film. I think that would work. And, but what would be really cool about doing a s simple continuation like that would be that it would be set in the nineties. And I feel a lot of people are very nostalgic to that time. So that as well, like the last Ronin idea, I feel would have a lot of success because you have all these people that see that time as like a good time. And like all the cool stuff that was coming out around that time, the, like the super Nintendo, the Genesis, the, the Pokemon power Rangers, like the turtles could be seeing all that stuff as it comes out. Like we could be seeing like Michelangelo p collect Pokemon cards and things like that. And it, you, you definitely get people's like nostalgia going for sure. And I think that nostalgia is powerful. Like, People like, especially things that were done well, like the 1990 movie, people love seeing stuff like that and stuff from the 90s. People like seeing stuff like that still nowadays. So, yeah, I think it would have that same effect where it's just like a great time, which was the 90s, and a great prop, great movie, which was the 1990 movie, colliding. And just, I think the collision of those two things would equal success. Same thing like if Last Ronin, which was also successful, the 1990 movie if those two collided same thing it was just two success bombs i guess going off you know right next to each other uh for lack of a better term i don't know if i'm making sense um let's keep going with the shading here so you see we've kind of done the leg there a little bit just kind of giving it some shading we'll do the other leg here let's go to the next question all right this next one uh what is your story um well grew up in a small town 
uh, I ended up uh, from a friend of a friend getting like a part-time job washing tennis courts and that was kind of like my first real job and I was, I was fairly young at the time I don't even think I was 20 and I, I stayed at that job for a long time but I'd never played tennis before in my life but being around it I kind of got like the bug I guess and uh, I wouldn't say I was like super good at it but I got pretty decent at it where I could like rally and stuff like rally pretty good like nothing like crazy competitive but I could hit the ball and just kind of consistently rally with people you know and that you know grew into like instead of just like washing the tennis courts uh, part time you know that turned into a more like full time gig where I was uh changing the uh let me sharpen this pencil sharpen this pencil here uh, that was uh it turned into like a full-time gig where i would still wash the courts and stuff but then i started like changing racket like changing the strings on a racket so like they'll break after a while of using uh a tennis racket the strings on it they'll they'll snap and uh so i you know i familiarized myself with the machine in the shop and uh there was like a an, an older pro there so like a tennis pro they like the guys that teach uh people there he kind of like taught me how to use it again i never played tennis in my entire life like that wasn't i i don't even know how i got the job to be honest i just went in one day and i applied and uh, yeah, I got lucky. I got it. And I just kind of, yeah, I would, I learned how to play a little bit and then, yeah, learning how to string rackets. Then we would, then our director like left. So that was like our, like our manager pretty much. He was gone. This guy that was there for like years too. And they had me run the shop there just kind of like until they found somebody because by that time I'd kind of learned the whole place pretty good. And this continued for, for years. Like they would find directors, not tennis directors. And then like they'd be there for a couple months and then they would leave. And then same thing. Another one would roll in and then like, yeah, there was just like no consistency in like the director. So I'd constantly be, uh, you know in charge of the place while they were looking for new directors so that gave me i like i guess like a good training ground to just kind of learn the things like that i know i guess i don't even know i don't really know anything <laughs> but i guess what i'm saying is like that kind of just gave me like life skills sort of not like crazy life skills but you know it's like a small shop you're running like a small little shop so I had never done that before. So you kind of learn a little bit about business and stuff. And, you know, somebody, they eventually, like, they would have, like, so the directors of, because there's different departments in, like, a place like, like that. There was, a, you know, a golf director. And there was, like, they had a gym and, like, a pool area. They had a restaurant. And, and this isn't, like, some type of, like, super fancy place it's like a little like like i said i grew up in and this is still like in the middle of nowhere like this is a small town and um so it's just like the local like recreational place but it's a club but it's not like a super like big city club or anything like that and yeah so yeah the, the, they would have like directors meetings but a lot of the times while 
the uh, directors were um, having their meetings and they weren't, they didn't have a director for tennis. Cause like I said, they would come and they would leave, they would come and they would leave. So a lot of those times in between when they had me doing stuff that the director would do, I would have to go to those meetings and kind of, it was a good way to like learn the ropes. Like I was just kind of like getting this free education and like business and it was pretty cool. Like uh, obviously I use a lot of those skills today. Like, and um, at the time I was like, oh man, I'm, you know, doing all this work. It's crazy. And it's like, I was down to do it. I was young. I had the energy. I was down. But at the same time, it was like, man, I'm doing like director stuff. At least I thought I was. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, and, uh, but no, no, it was like a free education. At least that's how I see it. And um, a lot of those skills, like I've taken with me, like eventually, like the whole entire place got a whole new management, like like a whole new thing we had we had like the same manager for like the longest time so like the whole new place got a whole new management and they cleaned house when they rolled up so when that happened um i i went and just was doing uh like it was like a sporting goods store for a little bit that wasn't that long though not as long as the tennis but i brought a lot of my skills i guess skills like the things that i learned i guess skills um over with me and I feel like that helped a little bit with that business. Like it wasn't my business. I was just there helping. And I think that helped them. I, at least I would like to think it did a little bit. Uh, so, so, but like I said, that didn't last very long. And then because as I was working there, eventually it turned into like a warehouse job. And I don't know, it got, I got bored or something. And, um, I remember I was like, I want to do something else. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I thought maybe YouTube, like I want to do YouTube. I thought, and so I try to stay in that business and do YouTube for them, but I don't think that was the direction they wanted to take. So I feel like, okay, I know this is what I want to do, but I can't do it here. And I remember I was sitting there one night working late and there was just one coworker with me and I told him about it. I was like, oh, I want to do this. And he was like, then go do it. And obviously easier said than done. Like, you know, it's like, that's a, you, how are you going to make money? Like on all this stuff, like, but it's like, it's something about the way he said it, or I don't know, maybe it was me. Maybe it was in the right, pl the right place mentally at the right time. I was just like, he's right. Why don't I just go do it? And so I went and I kind of like was trying to do like these side hustles on the side while I got, you know, the YouTube off the ground. And it wasn't this channel. It was like a movie review channel. So I was trying to do like, just like more broad, like movie news and so like the side hustles would like kind of get me by while I built, uh, while I try to build the YouTube up and it was rough. It was rough and it didn't work out as like cool as like you would think it did. It was, it was rough. And, uh, but you know, something kept pulling me to, you know, make, videos and eventually it was like oh that's right it's like i like the turtles like why haven't i just been focusing on the turtles it's been a part of my entire life like i'm trying i i don't know something just clicked and uh yeah my i took my passion for turtles to the next level and then here we are uh, years later and it's uh it's cool it's a uh, it's crazy how it worked out. It really is. And it's not like, oh man, it's so big now. Like, no, it's, it's, but it's to me, it, it is to me. I'd never, like, I always was like, oh, I hope it works. But now, you know, especially when like that plaque comes in, like the YouTube plaque that they send out, 
that was to me that was i was like dang okay that's that's what's up you know and yeah all right let's talk about a little bit here about the um uh the drawing here uh so we're kind of just kind of shading everywhere just giving him a little bit more depth so he doesn't look so like plain i guess in the sketch uh we're almost done I'm, now i just gotta wrap around here finish his body maybe do a little bit of his chest then i'll do like a hard outline i guess and then we'll call it a day so uh, i think i just hit the microphone sorry if it made a loud noise uh here we go let's go to the next question this is coming from scully it says why the third live action tmnt movie sucked <laughs> um there's a it's interesting because back when i first started the channel i'd rip on that third movie sometimes but now like having done this for a while and uh just kind of remembering old memories of watching that movie when i was younger it's kind of become a little nostalgic for me the third movie it's like i'm almost like man i was a little too harsh on it and you know, it's kind of like i don't know what it is about it it reminds me of like kicking back watching like surf ninjas then throwing on ninja turtles 3 aladdin things like that mighty ducks one and two and yeah, now it's just become like super nostalgic. Uh, but uh, <laughs> let's go back to why it sucked. Um, those are the reasons I think like it kind of like killed everything back then. Cause like, I think that personally, especially now seeing like what the MCU did back in its heyday when it was like rocking movies out leading up to an, uh, infinity war and Endgame, like, now seeing everything that they've done it's crazy to think that they were like ah three turtles movies we're done that's it that's all you can squeeze out of it now seeing how they they did that i'm like no they could do a bunch of turtles movies if they did them right they they could start off like just origins meeting the shredder the whole revenge line for shredder and Hamato Yoshi and all that. Just kind of like the first movie, super basic, the Foot Clan, maybe even like the Purple Dragons and things like that. Just very, keep it very simple and then keep going. Do, do Baxter Stockman next after that. Have that go on for a while. And then they never even touched Fugitoid or Triceratons or utroms city at war nothing like that and it and and all the stuff that and even like idw stuff too now that they've done like they could take a lot of inspiration from that as well and there's just so many storylines that they could adapt and make so many movies you just gotta they just gotta treat each one with care and time and get the right team together that's not like gonna bump heads and everybody has like the same unified vision to do this like that's what they need and just keep going obviously there's mutant mayhem and stuff like obviously like that that needs to do go first like do they need to do what they need to do and make that like a successful run obviously i'm talking about like later later like if they ever go back to like live action I guess that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this uh, mutant mayhem. I feel like it's carving its own path. It's doing its own thing. And that's cool too. Like I'm curious to see what they do. Uh, you know, the first one, you know, the turtles were everywhere again. Uh, mutant yeah, turtle mania was back. So that's, I love it. I love it. But I guess what I'm talking about is like my dream scenario where it's like live action and the movies keep going. I don't even know why I got here. It's because why did the third movie suck? That's right. Um, okay, let's go back to that. Uh, the suits. The suits look bad. <laughs> and I think if the suits would have 
even looked like Secret of the Ooze suits in that movie. I think that movie would be re remembered a lot more fondly. Uh, like I tr sometimes I try to think of it when I'm watching that third movie. Is uh oh I wonder like I'm trying to envision the Secret of the Ooze turtles in this movie like the way they look and I don't think it would have been bad. I think it would have been pretty cool seeing those turtles in like that environment. You know, going to Japan in the past and in the samurai suits and stuff like that. That would have been really cool to see uh, back then. But yeah, I think that's why, why that's one of the main reasons. Stuck. And then like the comedy, the comedy is definitely a lot more like Three Stooges in that movie where it's super over the top and goofy and like where the first two movies, like, like the comedy is more witty, I guess. That's also another reason I feel it's not, it doesn't do too well or it's not remembered too fondly. Uh, yeah, let's keep going here. So now we're shading his face and I'm not doing a super good job here shading. I'm just trying to, you know, give him a complete, look here and not leave one part too plain just kind of give them a they need to center this oh yeah look we're all off to the side so you've been watching half of the video and like the picture is like way out here to the side <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> uh we're gonna go ahead and give them just some shading there on the face i usually like it when they do that little line in the nose area just to like show that it's like popping out a little bit Give him a little like crease here on his head. Maybe another one on this side. Oh yeah, it's coming together. It's coming to coming together real good. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start shading here the chest pieces. But let's get another question before we start this part. All right, this one's coming over here from the TF guy. And it says, if you had to rank your favorite turtle from each main continuity, who would they be? Oh, that's a good, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um, let's start off. Well, if we're going to start off with Mirage. Uh... Mirage, I would say. It's weird. Like, I feel like they didn't have really have, like, their personalities yet in Mirage. Um, Raphael kind of does. So, I, it's either him or Leo in that original Mirage run. Um, I think I'm going to go with... I think I'm gonna go with Leo. I think in the Mirage. He's doing like I think he's doing like the narrating and stuff in that first issue, and that's that's pretty cool actually. I like I like him when there's like narration like that in a story. It'd be interesting to see that a movie in that format. Um uh, then after Mirage, what do we got? 1987. We have 1987. And that one's Raphael. It might be Raphael for a lot of these, to be honest. <laughs> Raphael is just so sarcastic. It's insane. It's insane how sarcastic he is. And just, Rob Paulson, I believe, who, who voices him. His voice and that sarcasm is just so perfect together. I, I love it. Um, then we have... So after 1987, well, we got 1990. The 1990 movie is also Raphael. I love how moody he is. I just, his voice, I think Josh Pice voices him. I just think it, that voice for that version of Raphael just fits so good. It's perfect. Uh, to me, it's the, one of the most perfect versions of Raphael to have ever come out. Uh, then what do we got? So I guess that carries on over, right? To the whole trilogy. 
So Raphael for that, for the full trilogy. And then we have, then we have uh, the next mutation after the trilogy, which they're all bad in that. But if I had to pick one, I guess Raphael, because he's the only one with like the regular turtle headband. Everybody, that's when they like started trying like the different headbands. I'm not a fan of that. I just like the regular old school. Um, next would be uh, 2003 Turtles. I think Leo, I think Leo shines the brightest in that series. Oh, maybe I, mean, I think I might have messed up here on the shading. I don't like that it goes down like that. It should be all part of the same panel. That's kind of like I'm looking at this as like as color texture, I guess, if it were color. Like it's kind of like it's going to be like a darker color on the borders and then it's like a brighter color because it gets more wear like on the surface, I guess. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I think Leo steals the spotlight in 2003 and then 2007 who's cool in 2007 again it's between Raph and Leo I think for me Raph maybe Raph a little bit more he's got he's got like the uh, the night watcher thing which is coming back if you saw the the preview for free comic book day 2024 the night watcher is coming back and he's gonna it's he's gonna be or at least a different version of him like in the comics because obviously the 2007 movies are are done like obviously they've been done and now but like in the comics they're going to introduce a version of uh the night watcher so that's going to be interesting yeah i don't think it's Raphael though but it, it's shaped like a turtle it's got fingers like a turtle like he's got the three fingers like that so it's definitely a turtle or at least it would seem uh, let me do like his he uh, headbands like swaying in the in the wind yeah that looks good so that's one and then we'll do like a separate one here oh yeah that looks great I mean, at least that's as good as I could do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, so where were we? 2007. Okay. I said Raphael. 2007 Raphael. And then after that, what do we have? What came after 2007? Uh, the IDW? Who's cool in the IDW? I think Leo. I think I like Leo the best in the IDW. And then 2012 came out. 2012 is pretty legit. Uh, I think, by the way, I did not give it a chance when it came out back in the day. Uh, I was like, what are these designs? What is this? <laughs> Why? Because they did like a low poly design i think it's called where it's like you know things aren't very defined they just look, almost look like shapes and uh, i'm sharpening the pencil here one sec but yeah so i was like what is this design and so i didn't give it a chance for the longest time and then obviously as the channel i started it, you know i i gave it a shot because i wanted to watch it yeah and i watched it and i was like wow this is this might be the best Ninja Turtle series out of all of them at least like story wise and like voice acting wise the designs maybe not so much so I still am not a huge fan of them but everything else it flows at least up into a certain point it flows so well I think it uh I think there's a part I think season five right like it isn't part of the continuity or something like that so that's where it's kind of like it falls apart i feel for a lot of people but that said the voice acting is tremendous 
the, the storylines, they're just, those episodes are really smooth to watch. Like I, I can binge it more than I can any other uh, series uh, that's come out. Uh, uh, 2003 looks better, like design wise. And it's a lot, I believe there's a lot more things faithful to the comic in that. Um, so yeah, it has its pros too, but to like just sit and binge i i like to do uh, now funny enough it's 2012 but who's my favorite turtle 2012 i think it's michelangelo uh, i think greg sipes just freaking killed it on that role like he just killed it like like kind of how robbie wrist killed it for michelangelo back in the day like that became michelangelo's voice and like same thing with like townsend coleman he it was like the voice of michelangelo like these guys uh, nailed like who Michelangelo is. At least to me, like to me, when I hear their voices immediately, and it's funny because they all kind of do their own thing, but they're all so uniquely Michelangelo. It's, it's so cool to hear. Okay. We've kind of done, uh, you know, kind of shading everywhere. I think now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give everything like a hard outline. And then we'll call it a day. So uh, let's do. Oh, let's keep going here with ranking the turtles, I believe. So we're on 2012. So that's uh, Mikey. And then after 2012, we have 2014, the Bay Turtles. And I'll just do Out of the Shadows with them. I think Leo looks the best. I And probably is the best better one like story-wise i guess uh so yeah i'm gonna go with leo for the bay turtles then after that was rise i think yeah i'm gonna go with leo on that one His design is cool and then the way they did him in the movie the rise movie i think was super cool i, I wish the whole i wish the whole show would have been done like that obviously they got budget you have to they have to budget things like not everything's gonna be like a movie but i just i just think they did a good job with the movie and i i i, I wish the show was done more like that yeah and then let's see after the rise of the turtles what do you have you have what batman versus ninja turtles the movie that we didn't spend a lot of t we didn't spend a lot of time with those guys so it's kind of hard to kind of like pick just one but if i had to i, I think Raphael he looked cool and then after that would be the ronin turtles which mikey you know mikey has a spotlight in that that's mikey's story Although Don, I did like kind of how they did Donnie and then his whole conclusion, we'll just call it that for those who haven't read it, was, was super impactful to me. That one was cool, the way it happened and everything. I'm going to have to sharpen the pencil here in a minute. I could already feel it getting dull here as I'm doing the outline, pushing a little harder for the outline. So makes sense. It's going to go dull sooner. There it is. So yeah, that's Mikey. And then after Last Ronin, yeah, we got the new movie. And I think, I think Leonardo, I think Leonardo is probably my favorite in this new one. Although Raphael was cool. And then Donatello too. Donatello was funny. Um, But yeah, I think Leo, I I think overall it's Leo. And you probably know by now like the des turtle design's a big deal for me. So I think he has the coolest design out of the four brothers. And uh, yeah, I just think he, I think he looks the coolest. And I think he was executed the coolest in, in the movie. And, uh, I hope they tweak the, the designs a little bit moving forward with those like, they're going to, like, I don't know if they plan on keeping those same exact designs as they get older, but I would imagine they're going to get older. 
the turtles in this franchise. It'd be cool to see them like tweak the designs a little bit each time they do a movie. Like they get a little, maybe get a little bigger every time. And same thing with like maybe even like the storylines. Although the, the, this one was pretty dark, it considered all things considered, like it's not PG thirteen or anything, but with uh, Ice Cube having some lines in there where I was like, dang, they can't believe they, they got that in there with the PG rating. Like, and I think that's like, it's cool. Like it's, it gave it some like gravity. Like it just made it feel serious when like stuff was happening. Like, oh man, this guy's, he's not playing around. And, um, and yeah, they did some pretty, some pretty serious stuff in it, but it'd be cool. Obviously it's somewhat lighthearted because it's animated and, but they have some moments where, you know, they did some darker stuff, but I would like to see them do sort of the way like the Harry Potter franchise did back in the day. And as the turtles get older, like more serious stuff starts happening to them, like in their stories. So the way like in Harry Potter, like the first two you know, they, they have some moments, but like, as it get, as it gets going, like Goblet of Fire, Goblet of Fire, and they come back, I think like Cedric, I think that was his name, is like dead. Like, he got killed. Voldemort killed him. And it's like, oh crap. Like, that's when like, oh, things start getting really serious. Someone's been killed. Yeah, then the movies start getting darker. So it'd be cool to see the, these turtles specifically. That'd be cool if they could do that. Like the first couple are like super family movies or whatever, like kind of how they're doing and they're super marketable. But now you got everybody invested in these turtles in this story. And then they, you know, they flip the, the script on everybody and the film start getting a little darker and you, you're like, oh no, like what's going to happen? Like, and it's just, you're just more invested too. Cause you knew them when they were happy and, and like everything was going good and, and now like oh no things are going bad like shredder's gonna kill everybody or so i don't know what i'm just throwing that out as an example but that'll be cool if they could evolve the storyline that way how do we even start talking about this let's go to the next question <laughs> okay this one says given all NECA has done is there anything you wish they would slash could do next it, yeah they've yeah they've done a lot of the turtles that's crazy and super cool um so just to kind of recap for those maybe who aren't like super hardcore collectors and are, are watching like so yeah NECA has done I think up until this point I have the yeah, I have a couple of the posters here I got from Comic-Con. So I could see like what figures they've done, at least up to that point. And I've seen what they've, you know, been releasing. So up until this point, they've done like Mirage Comics stuff. So the original comics, but they've done the figures. They've done figures. So it looks like they're dipping their toes into figures of the Archie comics, the Ninja Turtles Archie comics. You know, they're doing the last Ronin comic figures. They, you know, they've done a ton of the 1987 television show uh, figures. And then, you know, the live action movies, uh, they've with the those original the 1990 ones oh my gosh i thought those were the coolest things when they came out uh, i was yeah that that was fun uh seeing those come out when those big ones came out i remember it was uh it was a big deal uh, everybody was like whoa and then uh now they've done secret of the ooze they've done part three the ninja turtles three figures and now they're doing like side characters and stuff, which is, it's wild. It's wild to see how big that line has grown. 
And um, yeah, they, they did the concert ones. Yeah, and the concert turtles, like, at least like in terms of like old classic turtle stuff, like, I think that was like 1990. Well, they did those all throughout the 90s, the concert turtles, but I think one of their last things they did was like in 1994. So looking at the turtles neck align, um, sorry. Looking at the turtles neck align, that seems to be like the new or like other than the last Ronin, which is comics. I'm talking about like on screen now. Other than yeah, the concert turtles, I, I feel like are like the newest version of the turtles that they've done. Other than Ronan. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Because obviously Mirage is older. And then Archie Comics came out in 88. And I believe. And then the cartoon came out in 87. And then the 90s movies were in the 90s, obviously, all the way up to 93. And then the Concert Turtles, the last thing they did was like in 94 or something. And then, yeah, other than the Ronin thing, that's like the newest thing. So, um, I think, to me, the next logical step, like, obviously, they're going to keep doing like side characters and stuff in those things. But I'm talking about like a new like thing they haven't done. I think the next thing would be, and I know it's, it wasn't a huge fan favorite, but it would still be cool to see as like screen accurate versions of the next mutation turtles. I think that would be cool. I, it, I think it's kind of like the concert turtles. Like, yeah, nobody thought like the concert turtles were, well, the music was cool, but like nobody thought like the suits were like the coolest thing in the world back then. And they look funny and stuff, but it's still cool to have like a, really detailed figure of them and i think the the same thing would be true with the next mutation uh turtles it'd be cool to see like screen accurate figures of them and that's still kind of classic that's 97 yep and then um uh, after that i don't know if they would go i mean it's that's 20 years now 2003 would be after that so that's 20 years ago so i guess that is kind of, that's kind of classic i don't know if they would consider that too new to do because they do more like 80s stuff and like 90s stuff i at least that's i think i don't know if they've done anything like in 2000s uh no they have yeah i don't know i don't know i i, I think it would be cool to see them do screen accurate versions of 2003 uh, turtles that'd be crazy uh the i i believe super seven is gonna do 2003 figures here coming up uh next year so we'll see how those look and then if neca does end up doing 2003 figures sometime down the line it'll be interesting to compare the two and just seeing like the difference all right, so we're finishing up the lines here. And is there any more hard lines where I'm kind of missing? No, that's pretty much it. Should I give him a buckle? Let's give him a buckle so we know it's Raphael. Boom. We'll give him like that. A little circle. And then the R... Boom, it's Raphael. Give it a little like 3D element, sort of, I guess. And there you go. We're done with our picture of Raphael. Let me, there we go. Center it a little bit. Kind of got pushed off to the side again. But yeah, there he is, Raphael. Let me know what you think. Uh, that was a fun QA super long i think this thing is like over an hour and a half long so i hope you guys enjoy it hope you guys have merry christmas happy holidays 
all of that. Yeah, super cool to be able to do this. Uh, thank you everybody for watching. Um, yeah, working on some videos, working on the Armageddon game, my breakdown and review. It is massive. It's about as big as this video, like lengthwise. Uh, yeah. And so that one is coming soon. And then, yeah, rank, uh, I'm still ranking the designs on that tier list of the different Ninja Turtles. Uh, so the on-screen versions. So uh, Leonardo's next. So we're working on that too. So working on that, working on Armageddon game. Big breakdown. Should be a lot of fun. A lot of updates dropping every day. So follow us on all the socials if you want to catch that like in real time or, or stay subscribed here. We'll definitely do videos on all that as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you all in a little bit with another one. Take care.